So today I'm going to be taking a look at a newer micro brand called Selton. They just debuted their first watch, which is a little bit more dressy leaning, and that's definitely my style. Just full transparency, I was sent this watch by Selton to review. I didn't have to say anything nice about it. I just basically got to keep it for two weeks, give my honest opinion, and then send the watch back. So take that for what you will, and let's get into the video. So we have a diameter of 40 millimeters, lug to lug of 47.4, height of about 13.2, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications for this watch, we're gonna have the Miyota 9132 movement beating away in here you can see it through a sapphire case back there we do have sapphire on the back as i said and sapphire on the front with five layers of anti-reflective coating on the underside we do have 50 meters of state of water resistance but just have a regular push-pull crown watch is hand windable it is hackable uh, and there is a 24-hour scale down here, which is pretty cool. To note, there is a ghost date position, so when you pull out the crown, there is a date disc underneath, and you can feel it click over, so keep that in mind. And last but not least, this watch retails in all variations from Selton for $6.99 on their website, but they currently have a sale for $6.09. I'm not 100% sure if that's one of those perpetual always at $6.09 sales, but between $6 and $700, and you're getting this watch. So starting off with the dial here, and this is probably the best part about the watch, and I don't think a lot of people will argue with me here. It's a really dynamic dial, and it has a lot of life to it. You, of course, have the adventuring dial base disc, uh, which is awesome. Adventuring is always fun to play with, especially in this very deep black tone. The way that it sparkles and just pops out against the blackness is really pleasing to the eye. But instead of a regular kind of 24-hour dial disc, you have a little bit more stylized of a night-day cycle with a darker meteorite slab representing night and a lighter meteorite slab representing day. You have, of course, the stars as well as a little bit of a relief and just an aesthetically pleasing choice. And then this kind of more matted blue background that it all pops off against. Really well done. I like the symmetry, of course, with the rest of the dial. I appreciate the fact that they actually didn't include the date window, even though the movement calls for one, just because I think it is very clean as is the way the Selton text here, the logo is at 12 o'clock, especially on this more uh, dedicated plaque here and the uh, stylized disc down here. It just looks very cohesive, very nicely done. And to be fair, a date would have ruined it. You then have this grayish black outer seconds track, which contrasts nicely at some angles and blends in at others. It doesn't ever go full black, but it does just look relatively cohesive in the design. And then we have these rectangular hour indexes, which are three-dimensional applied. Uh, they look interesting and they actually are filled with black ink, as you can kind of see depending on the angle. And when we zoom in, you'll be able to see it more. That is interesting because I've never seen that done to an hour marker before. Usually it's like a lumen fill instead of actually ink, uh, but it's nice. Contrast nicely against the marker itself, so kind of helps legibility in that way. The black ties into the adventuring. The black infill also ties into the fact that there's black infill into the Selton text right here. So really nicely done uh, little elements for this dial. And you can also see in this outer track here, the kind of bridge between the adventuring dial and the seconds track, there also is this little metal ring. So there's a lot going on on this dial. There's a lot that kind of shines back, reflects at you, catches your eye. Uh, lots of detail really going on, and I appreciate that there's so much attention paid to that detail. Looking at the hands for a second, we have a rather untraditional handset that I don't see in many watches, and I don't think I've ever physically seen in a modern wristwatch. Uh, the pontiff style hand with this very circular edge here, which not only helps with legibility, the hands are very different in their appearance, but I also just think it looks really cool. Again, it is different from everything else out there. It gives a dressy, classy feel to the watch, and I just really enjoy how it looks. And then lastly, we have the second hand here, which is actually thermally blued. You can see it at certain angles. Ties into the little blue element down here with a disc. Uh, contrasts pretty well against the dial, so legibility-wise, it's a good choice. And I just think it's nice to see that at this price point. Overall, I love how both simple and complicated the dial is at the same time. I like that they kept the text very minimal. There's nothing there that you don't need. It really is just the brand text at the top. And I think at least without zooming in, it probably is one of the most high quality dials I've seen from a micro brand, and I appreciate that. So taking a look in more natural light, we can see the watch face definitely comes to life a little bit more. You do see the adventuring sparkles coming in and out, depending on which angle you have it at, and playing a lot more than usual. Uh, it does kind of just always appear as a pure black dial because, I mean, <laughs> it is black. And then, of course, you get the reflections uh, from the glare of the crystal kind of coming in and out. It is a pretty glare-prone uh, crystal, so just keep that in mind. But overall, the indices, the metal applied elements really pop out nicely. I do wish there was maybe something a little bit more than just black lacquer in the middle because that, I think, takes away a little bit from uh, what light play the watch could have. 
But as it stands, very nice looking, uh, really is just as good in the light as it is in the shade, uh, or really inside versus outside, so can't complain too much. So taking a look at the dial up close here, we can see, of course, the classic deep coloration and visual interest that the Aventurine has. You, of course, have specks of kind of copperish gold, blue, and of course, the base black texture, which really just adds a lot of life to the dial, adds a lot of sparkle, uh, and to me, it looks amazing. Looking at the applied plaque here for the Selton logo, you can see at certain angles, there's a little bit of roughness to the metal, especially like there around the end. To be fair, it looks pretty good, not only close up, but definitely at wrist view. You see we have these kind of chamfered surfaces at the top, bottom, and on each side, which give a little bit of depth to the uh, plaque itself. It doesn't make it seem as boring or as one dimensional as something that doesn't have those little added aspects of finishing. What's really nice too is although the text itself isn't engraved down into the plaque, What's nice is it is very three-dimensional. It has a very inky, almost still wet quality to it. And I think it looks pretty high quality. No misprinting with the numerals. And overall, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, for the end there, we do actually have a little bit of fuzziness that I just saw. Uh, but as it stands, very hard to see from the wrist and very hard to even see up close. So not too bad. Moving on to the markers, the story is a little bit different. We can see at certain angles, a little bit of roughness comes out, uh, some dirtiness from like the ink infill also becomes more apparent, scratches along the markers themselves. Just in general, we can see the markers have a completely polished surface, but of course, because of that, these kind of blemishes do really pop out when you look up close. Again, from wrist view, I can't see any of this, but it is there. I do like how this numeral pretty much slots into the minutes track there and kind of extends over the base adventuring dial. Gives a little bit of depth to the dial, almost feels like the marker's floating slightly. And you can see at certain angles, the marker's actually reflected into the dial itself. So a lot of fun to be had. Again, the finishing isn't perfect, but I think fairly acceptable for the price point. You do have the outer curved circular ring, which adds a lot of light play to the watch. And I think it looks really nice, really brings your eye into the dial itself. The stars are completely brushed, so they have this kind of always on effect, even at really extreme angles, or as you're moving your wrist, even if the rest of the dial goes dark or this kind of sub uh, dial track goes dark, the stars still kind of shine out at you, and it's pretty nice to see. Of course, you have the two differing meteorite slabs, both gonna be completely unique from watch to watch. It adds a good amount of visual interest to the watch. It adds a difference of finishing, adds a difference of material, adds a difference of coloring with these two different shades of gray. It really is a very nice touch, and I appreciate that it exists. It's not a way I would have ex expected a 24 hour dial to be used, but it is done well. And something I wanna note by moving the hand a little bit, this circular part of the pontiff hour hand will overlap perfectly with the cutouts for these meteorite slabs at two points of the day, once with the dark and once with the light. And it is a really fine detail that definitely was planned out and looks amazing when it is done. It doesn't hide any of the beauty of the wash or any of the details that you see on the dial. There we have it lined up with the darker meteorite, and here we have it lined up with the lighter. So focusing on the hands, I do really like the shape. This pontiff style has a very rounded nature to it, which really catches the light. Of course, fully highly polished, so it does, again, just capture the light naturally, but because of that rounded nature, it doesn't catch light evenly, so it gives a little bit more interest than a flat, two-dimensional hand. I do really like how with this circular cutout for the pontiff hour hand, uh, that is in a more brushed blasted finish, so it does contrast nicely and even help more with legibility. Of course, we have a little bit of a scratch there at the very edge, triangular tip of the hand. Sucks to see, but at the end of the day, the hands aren't too badly QC. There are some scratches here and there. But at the price point, it's fairly acceptable. We do have this nice circularly brushed uh, center pinion cap, and then again, the heat blue seconds hand. There is like a little bit of like a dusting or scratching there towards the base of the hand, but overall it does look pretty well finished and not too many complaints. As far as the dial goes, I think there's a lot of detail on display here, a lot to like, a lot that I think uh, the extra mile is taken in terms of just design. Of course, there are gonna be some QC issues. The markers could be a lot better, but I think at this price point, most of it is fairly forgiven. So taking a look at the case of this wash, it's not as complicated as the rest of it. We have mainly brushing going on here. We have a sunburst of brushing here on the bezel, which kind of draws your eye nicely either up towards the dial or out away from it. We do have a high polish relief here on the edge of the bezel itself. We then do have horizontal brushing on the case side and a nice little chamfer here along the edge side of the case. We do have a signed silt in the crown. And then we do have a little bit of a high polish here right under the crown where the case back meets the bottom of the mid case. Looking at the mid case itself, you can see it's relatively thick and weirdly enough, the crown is very low. Uh, 
don't really know why that is. I don't know if it's because there's more height to the dial surface itself. I don't know what is making that movement so lowly positioned in the watch. But as it stands, it's not something that's bad or something that I really notice on wrist and the crown doesn't dig into the wrist itself. So at least there's that. There is a good amount of curvature to the lugs here. So it does wear comfortably on wrist despite being a little bit thick. I think the chamfer here along the edge of the case is a little too subtle. It doesn't really pop out that much at you and kind of not at all. At some angles, you don't really even notice it. And it does disappear into the edge of the case right here. There is no high polish section. So I think if they expanded that a little bit, it would look a little bit more premium. Looking at the bracelet, we see we have this kind of H-link style with a very defined uh, end link. Uh, at first, I didn't really like how the end link looked. I think it was a little bit too brash, a little bit too uninteresting, I guess you can say. But when you wear it, it kind of blends away. You don't really see the full brunt of the end link itself. And the bracelet kind of looks good when it's actually on wrist. Digressing slightly, we do, of course, have this H style end link. There's a lot of articulation to the bracelet. It's very comfortable, drapes very well. Uh, you do have the high polished square sections here between each link, which add a little bit of class to the watch. Again, this isn't really a sports watch necessarily. So that high polish is welcome and I think deserved. We do use screw links on the bracelet here, which is nice to see. Butterfly deployment clasp with a little perlage on the inside there, a little unnecessary. Uh, and to be fair, pretty decent action to it. It's weird because this little portion kind of has like a flip over mechanism built into it. Don't really know what that functions as. Um, I don't know if it's just kind of like a top that integrates into the clasp and looks nice. Has a little bit of a weird action to it sometimes. It can kind of get it in the way and prevent you from closing it. So keep that in mind. Not a big deal, but it exists. Signed Selton logo into the clasp there. All the links are one size and there's no micro just in the clasp because it is a butterfly deployant. Uh, but supposedly Selton does include an extra 1.25 times link in the box. I didn't notice one in mine, but that's probably because it's a review unit and doesn't have all the, you know, accoutrement. But as it stands, it doesn't fit me perfectly the way it's sized. So I put one more link in, it's too loose. If I take one out, or I mean, technically if I take one out, it's gonna be too tight. If I have it in this already variation, I kind of have to wear it tighter than I'm used to. So I think that extra link included actually would be perfect in terms of a way to increase comfortability of the bracelet. Uh, it's just unfortunate I don't have mine. Taking a look at the case back really quickly, we do have a customized Selton rotor there, uh, done in this kind of like rose gold tone, a little bit of a blasted case back with a couple things on the back, a rare find, not a stereotype and Selton on the back. No useless information, which I think is good. And it is just a kind of classic looking micro brand case back. Nothing to write home about. It is nice to see that the bracelet includes a quick release spring bar, so it really is easy to take it off and put it back on. One thing I will say is the bracelet feels a little bit light. It isn't very substantial. It's kind of maybe striking a balance of trying to be dressy and not too sporty. Uh, so it is like lighter and thinner. But because the case itself is thick, you could have gone for maybe a little bit of a thicker, more substantial bracelet. On wrist, to be fair, it doesn't feel dainty or anything like that, but I think it could be a little bit more substantial. And one little cool aspect is you do have this little plaque uh, mounted into the case, which shows individual numbering for each watch. Kind of interesting detail, more of like a thing you see more in high horology or things like that. But it's nice to see this on a little bit more of a micro brand doing something a little bit more unique, a little bit more interesting. Two different types of lug holes, one that's more standard for the bracelet and straight end straps and one you can use curved end straps for. I don't typically go with curved end straps because 99% of the time I don't like how they look with watches, but if you do, you have the option. So moving on to how this watch wears, earlier I was wearing this fun little uh, wandering hour complication off of AliExpress. So here we have the watch on my six and a half inch wrist and I think it looks pretty good. It's not too large. Obviously the lug to lug doesn't overhang on my wrist. It is again, a little bit on the thick side, but to be fair, when I wear it, I don't notice it that much. You do have a lot of the case back that sits into the wrist. And to be fair, I've actually tried this out with a few dress cuffs and it does slide under. So, you know, take that for what you will. The crown isn't too large, so it doesn't really dig into the wrist or anything like that. Uh, there aren't any like harsh edges either to the watch itself, so it doesn't really hurt when you're wearing it, which is nice. Specifically for the Butterfly Deployant too, it's not sharp, it doesn't dig in too much, and it doesn't hurt. Although the watch again is a little bit thicker on wrist, it doesn't feel that way. It definitely sits in a little bit closer to the wrist, and I like that. Looking at it from the side view, again, because of that case curvature, it does really just conform and hug the wrist pretty nicely. Uh, of course, your wrist may be different, and if you're, maybe your wrist is a little too small, it might feel at odds. With that being said, 
if I move the watch up a little bit, I have a closer to a six inch wrist here and it still does fit and conform pretty well. I don't really think you're gonna have many troubles wearing this case unless you go down to maybe like a five, four and a half inch wrist really. Uh, for most people, it will conform pretty well, look nice on wrist I think and uh, no complaints with the wearing experience. So moving on to some other straps, this is actually one that's included with the watch. It's made by Has No Bounds, which is actually a really good strap company. I've bought a lot of straps from recently. Make really high quality stuff. It's a little bit thin, I think maybe for this watch styling. Not too terrible, but uh, I would go a little bit thicker. Really comfortable, doesn't really take any time to break in. We have this very dark blue matte coloration that I think pairs pretty well with the watch. One thing to note is they went with a fairly long strap end, so it actually doesn't even fit my wrist unless I poke a hole in it. So on the very last hole, I have quite a bit of room. So keep that in mind. If they start offering a small variation, maybe ask them, but as it stands, it's kind of made for a larger wrist. Looks pretty decent on the watch, I would say. Not my favorite combo, but definitely serviceable. And again, really good quality strap for a free strap that comes with the watch. Staying with that blue theme, but adding something just a little bit thicker to help offset. This strap is from Vario. Uh, really good quality, really comfortable. This kind of distressed leather feel adds a little bit to the watch, I think. Doesn't make it too dressy. Adds a little bit of color that ties in with the seconds hand and the 24 hour disc here. I enjoy it. This is something that I wore this watch on the most. I think it's a really good combo, really comfortable. Again, the thickness of the straps helps offset the thickness of the watch a little bit. And to me, it looks just a little bit more at home. Next, we have this silicone NATO from Benchmark Straps. I think this is a surprisingly good combo. This nice black monotone feel helps the dial elements pop out a little bit more. The sparkliness of the Aventurine, the blue accents, those all really take front stage when you have this uh, black on black tone look to the watch. The NATO is so thin itself that it doesn't really add any height to the watch. Pretty comfortable, helps plant the watch really well on the wrist itself too, and I just dig it. Next, if you wanna to try to dress the watch up a little bit, we have this nice kind of distressed matte alligator uh, strap from Deluxe. This one's customized to be a little bit thinner and kind of just like the Hasno Bound straps, I think maybe a little bit too thin for this watch, but it's serviceable. I think the light blue tone injects a little bit more fun to the watch, plays off the other blue tones that are there. Looks pretty good in my opinion. And of course, with that more serious grain of leather, dresses up the watch a little bit, I think. Next, we have this curved leather strap from Veblenis in this more like camelish suede tone. Uh, you can see it does really integrate pretty well with the watch. Sometimes when you have a uh, integrated curved end strap, when you put it on the wrist, you have these very large I guess you can just say portions of strap that kind of face up at you and really pop off the wrist. To me, that detracts from the wearing experience a little bit. But because of the way this is integrated, and I think possibly because the lugs and the case are a little bit thicker in general, uh, you don't get that look with this strap or this integration. I think that's a really good aspect about this watch. Like I said, the strap doesn't really pop up too much at you. It just looks kind of integrated into the case. The brown tone itself makes the watch a little bit less serious. And to me, I think it looks pretty good. Nice to have that option of curved versus straight spring bar, but I'll typically just go for straight. And lastly, the classic white archer silicone strap plays really well off the dial, ties in a little bit to the stars, which have this white bright tone about them at times. Uh, to me, it just looks good. Of course, gonna help it wear comfortably, uh, adds a little bit of fun to the watch and can't go wrong. Uh, ties in a little bit too to kind of the white speckling feel you get from the Aventurine. So really no complaints about this strap, this combo. And something too is like when I have it on a strap like this, where it plants itself very nicely onto the wrist, I don't notice it being that thick. In my brain, in my, I guess, eyeball vision when I'm looking at the watch, I don't register the thickness. It doesn't feel like, oh my God, why did they make the watch this, this, this millimeter? It just feels like a watch and it wears well and it looks good. So pros and cons of this watch, and I think one of the biggest pros right off the bat is just the fact that it's a very uniquely designed watch. We're seeing the Ponta style handset, which really you don't see in any modern day watches and it's just, really well executed here and I think looks good with the general watch design. You're also just getting an interesting mix of materials. You're getting the Venturine dial, the black lacquer, uh, the meteorite slabs, and stainless steel applied elements as well. So you're getting a lot of different light play, a lot of different just visual uh, interest from the watch that's coming and going and uh, really just giving you a lot to enjoy when you look at your watch, look at the dial. And I think personally, it's probably could be fairly easy to mess up that balance when you're throwing so many different elements into a dial and kind of mishmashing them and expecting it to work. But here it's all executed very well. Uh, some of the elements are very subtly used and it 
really, I think, sings in the overall design. It comes one of those designs, in my opinion, where the whole is really greater than just the sum of the parts. It really is something that's special. And kind of a slight additional point off of just the unique mix of uh, dial materials and whatnot, I like that they used a Ventrain just in general. It, you're not seeing too many watches, especially under the $1,000 price point, use that uh, dial base and it just is refreshing to see. It's really dynamic dial. Uh, it's really interesting to see. It's very uh, galaxy-esque nebulous and just feels really good on wrist. It, it's something that is not quite as harsh as a three-dimensional dial texture but not quite as subtle as like a sunray pattern or a brushing effect. It has this beautiful in-between and it is very lively depending on what lighting you have it in. Another big con for the watch in my opinion is that it uses a heat blued seconds hand. It's something that I don't and I don't think many people would expect to see at this price point of sub a thousand dollars and it is a really nice addition to the watch. Is it uh, a second hand that I think has the most beautiful blue depth that I've ever seen from a seconds hand? Not quite but it does do a really good job. It's definitely much more interesting and premium feeling than a painted or uh, just colored blued hand and I appreciate and commend Selton for taking that extra step and that extra cost on themselves. And my last con for the watch is kind of like despite the thickness despite the dimensions it is very comfortable on the wrist. It was something that I was kind of apprehensive about because it's not a thin movement, it's not a thin watch and uh, I thought because it's this dressier leaning watch it has this very refined nature about everything on the dial it might have been at odds. And I do think that still, if this was a nine, 10, even if you could get really, really thin to eight, seven millimeters, it would be a perfectly wearing, amazing dress watch. As it stands, it does kind of blend the lines a little bit. It becomes a little bit sporty because of the thickness, but it by no means can't be used as a dress watch or as a dressier watch. Uh, if you put it on a more casual strap, like even the one that's included, you can definitely dress it down. With that being said, the watch didn't have any problem slipping under most of my dress cuffs, but that's also you know personal preference on how tight you wear yours. I think just overall, there's an idea of the fact that I thought it was gonna be less comfortable than it was, and I did enjoy the wearing experience. So moving on to cons and kind of just following on from the last kind of pro, it is just a little bit thick. Uh, again, it's something that I think could be approved upon. Uh, I don't really know how many other movement variations on the market use this 24 hour time scale, uh, 24 hour sub dial that can really be uh, transplanted into this watch. And I don't know how many of them are thinner, but I think with how good this design is and how refined you can make it, I'd personally be willing to pay twice the price that it's at currently if the movement uh, was higher end and made it thinner as an overall package. Another con I have with the watch is I don't love the butterfly deployment on it. Uh, I don't really like any butterfly deployment. I've tried the Nautilus, I've tried you know, or the Royal Oak and I just don't like how it feels on a wrist. Personal preference, I do think just with a regular folder of a class you have more variation in terms of uh, how comfortable it sits and actually having micro just in the clasp built in more easily. So as it stands, I think the bracelet uh, clasp closure can be improved, but uh, it is a fairly small issue. And last but not least, I think the bezel itself doesn't perfectly, I guess, just mesh with the design of the watch. The brushing on the bezel, at least to me, feels a little bit uh, too wide of a grain, a little bit too aggressive, and it takes away from like the cleanness, the dressiness of the watch. I don't think the bezel should be polished, uh, although maybe if they made it thinner, it could look really good as a polished bezel. Uh, but I do think the brushing should be finer on the bezel uh, and feel more refined because of that. So final thoughts, and I actually enjoyed this watch a ton more than I thought I would. I really liked the design concept from the first time I saw the watch online, and I just thought it's a good looking watch, and I really loved the use of Aventurine, and I don't doubt it will probably look good. Uh, but in person, the way the elements blend together, the adventuring, the meteorite, the, the metal applied elements, they all work in harmony together. I think it looks really premium, looks really good, and it's just unique because there's not a lot of brands doing that mixture of elements and not doing it well. Again, the watch wore a little bit thickly, but I would love to see a thinner variation in the future if they iterate on this. Uh, but really, there isn't much bad I can say about it. The only kind of reason you wouldn't want this watch is one, if you would find it too thick as a uh, dedicated purely dress watch, or two, if for some reason the design doesn't 
speak to you. Otherwise, if you think you like this watch, there's almost no reason to not get it. I think it's a fairly fair price point between the six and seven hundred dollar range, and there isn't really much competing out there with it. I have to really commend Selton because to me this is a unique design. This isn't something that I feel is purely reminiscent of something else. It's not a complete one-to-one -one knockoff or a complete one-to-one -one copy or a easy homage. It is something unique, something new, and something that I didn't expect to see. And because of that, I do really enjoy this watch both visually and kind of how it comes together in person in the metal. If you're looking for a really beautiful dress watch, it's hard to do much better than this. Even on the bracelet, you can kind of sport it up a little bit, which is nice. And realistically, I just think it's a really good watch and I don't think you'll be disappointed if you grab one. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Thank you as always for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in another one.